Ah, the Goonies. Director Richard Donner and writer Steven Spielberg. No, I'm not that smart. I just happen to have Google. Well, enough about my life. Let's get on with the review. The first thing I gotta say is the Goonies is a timeless classic that wasn't just good for its time. That can be seen over and over again. I know, because I've done that. It's an adventure, thriller, romantic, no homo, and a comedy. Well, anyway, as the movie starts, we see a family of convicts, the Fratellis. There's the mother, and her sons Francis, and Jake. If watching convicts break someone out of jail not a good enough opening, I don't know what is. Not only does it lead into a police chase, but the chase runs by all the main characters. Like Andy, for instance, who's a cheerleader of some sort. I don't know, they don't give us much background. But if she was a cheerleader, shouldn't she be at the top of that pyramid? I don't know. But we do know she dates some preppy guy, but he's not important. Now here we have Mal, the sarcastic prick that everyone loves. If he wasn't so funny, he'd be kind of an a-hole. I mean, look at him. Look at him just plotting. <laughs> Who comes up with this stuff? That was hilarious. Now here comes Stephanie. She has the most random entrance. What was that? She was bobbing for crap? Now here's Data, honestly my favorite character. I don't know, I think it's because he invents stuff. Except for this, I don't know what this is supposed to be. It's like, congratulations, you invented a belt that fires a suction cup. Nah, I'm kidding. But seriously though, that's pretty random. Now here's Lawrence, but anyone who watches the movie knows him as Chuck. He's a pretty funny character. I like that he was the only one that knows the police chase. Then we got Rosalita. Not a main character, but we find out why she's important in the end. And finally we got Mikey and Bran, the only people the police chase didn't go by. But we're going to assume this car passing by their house is the Fratelli's car that just evaded the police. Now to pull everyone together, everyone shows up at Mikey's house, all at random times. Mouth just shows up for no reason. Chunk shows up with a story, but Mouth makes him do the truffle shuffle in order to get in. First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. So finally Mikey comes over to let Chuck in with this elaborate contraption that now that I think about that data probably made. I look looking at this thing. Except for that chicken. How are they supposed to know that the thing was gonna lay an egg? Other than that, it's pretty cool. As a kid I always thought it was longer. Now Data being the cool person he is, he zip lines into Mikey's house. He's such a legend. That was a great idea. But what I never understood is how come Mikey and Mal just didn't open the screen door before Data crashed into it. What, was it locked? Well enough about the characters, let's get on with the story. So these kids' families are being bought out by these guys, which means, ah, you have to move out. Never was quite sure what they wanted to build. So for a random reason, they all decided to go up into Mikey's attic. I don't know, I forgot why. So while playing with random stuff, Mikey finds a map. That he's convinced is a treasure map. So after some epic storytelling, the boys are convinced that finding this treasure is what's gonna save the goondocks. So after tying up Brand and ruining his bike, they were gone. So after some biking, they finally come to the Simpsons Rock in a hard place. So they go in, Brand finds them, and for no particular reason, Stephanie and Andy just show up. From this point on, the movie just keeps getting better and better, considering it's still the beginning of the movie. They find themselves in the basement of the Fratellis, complete with counterfeit machines and dead bodies. The only way out is through a fake fireplace that Mikey found. From then on, it's tunnel, after tunnel, after tunnel. Meanwhile, Chuck was left behind to do one thing, which was to warn the police. I don't think he did a very good job.
Just like that last prank about all those little creatures that multiply when you throw water on them. Because he gets caught. And after a crying monologue, he spills the beans. Or I guess I should say, he spills the water cooler about what everyone else is. So now the Vertilis are after the kids. And they leave Chunk with the deformed son, Sloth. Who, now that I think about it, looks like Dr. Farnsworth from Futurama. So after just escaping from the Fratellis, they go down this water slide that reminds me of the tubing slide over at Schlitterbahn. You know, the one you ride bareback and it's dark. So at the end, they're all spit out in front of the pirate ship that has the gold that they've been searching for. But the Fratellis catch up to them and make them put their gold in a bag. Warning, spoiler alert. If you don't want to know what happens at the end of the movie, go watch it. And then come back to finish this video. So Slosh shows up with the most epic opening line. And ends up saving the kids. So the cops show up. There's a big reunion. But wait, we're still forgetting that the family's being bought out by this guy. So as he's about to sign it, this is where Rosalie becomes important. She just randomly grabs a bag from Mikey's jacket to find jewels. So in an epic attempt to warn the family, Mouth finally translates. So ah, happy ending. They don't have to leave the goondocks. But now this is where things get interesting. I'm gonna go through all my problems in the movie. First of all, that crab gets on my nerves every single time. Next, what kind of amateur race is this supposed to be? That freaking truffle shuffle. Cause as a fat little kid, people used to tell me to do that. It is kind of funny though. The chicken laying that egg, and just the thought of resetting that whole thing. Why can't Mikey and Mal just open the screen door? Why is this line that Chunk says so funny? What is that? Oh shit, what? What is that? Why do we clearly see them picking up the frame, throwing the glass off, but then Look at that. The glass just comes right back on. And did you see that? None of the hands by itself are the actor's hands. Like, what's the point of using different hands? And why does Mikey pick up that random rock? How does he know it's going to be useful? How does this hold brand? You see it's around his shoulders, but it looks like his hands are cuffed too. Another thing, what is that supposed to be? Why is that so scary? They freaked out when they saw that. And then they claimed it almost killed them. And I know a lot of people like to complain that the actor called Bran by his real name. But I didn't notice. So it really doesn't matter. Now I don't know about data. But I would think I know that money doesn't come at three at a time on a one sided paper. Another problem. Who smells ice cream? Do you know how convenient those lights would have been if they worked? Oh, data. Only problems. Batteries don't left so long, guys. How does Chester Cover Pop set off a booby trap that just drops one rock instead of all of them? Why doesn't Troy notice that the bucket that's supposed to be pulling someone up isn't very heavy? I didn't like how they never showed how Mikey got his hand out of this contraption. I always wonder what that message said. At first I thought you were supposed to read it, but apparently not. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I don't know why Stephanie's just chilling in the back. Hey, can someone please tell me what he says? I always think it's a cuss word. Why do we see more paper being thrown into the shreds? I know the octopus was the delete scene, but they should really take that part out of the movie. Somebody tell me why my microphone is now echoing. And leading up to my most important rant. Check, is that better? Up on the shelves, can you hear me? Okay. Moving on. This freaking piano scene gets on my nerves so much. So basically... I mean, we gotta play the bones to get out of here. Okay, but they're bones. You have to find middle C. Trying to find middle C. Good work. But aren't you beginning music? Oh, there they are. But now comes the difficult part. Are you supposed to replay what you just messed up on? Or are you just supposed to go on? Eddie K, I would have died. And then at the end, I'm confused about. Is this supposed to be a commentary or a review? You can judge. 